Joining me now, Joe Walsh, former Republican congressman from the state of Illinois. He's a former 2020 presidential candidate. He's the host of the podcast White Flag with Joe Walsh. Also joining us, former Democratic Congressman Max Rose of New York. He's a veteran of the United States Army. He's the new vice chairman of the Sufan Group, which is a global intelligence and security consultancy. Good morning to both of you. Thank you uh, for being here. I got to say, you're both great friends of our show, but you're, you're sort of from different places. Max, you are uh, a, a sort of a moderate uh, Democrat who's, who feels that government Democrats should be talking about issues that are important to the American people as opposed to some of the stuff that they might have been focused on. Joe was a, uh, how do you say it, Joe? Fairly right-wing uh, conservative yes. <laughs> uh, member of Congress. So I want to start with you, Max, because when you were in, in uh, when you were elected and, and then when you were defeated, you, you made the point that Democrats need to talk about things that people care about. And now we're watching the Republicans do what you warn Democrats not to do. They're, they're, they've got endless committees and investigations talking about stuff that, generally speaking, when both of you knock on doors and talk to your constituents, people are not talking about. Yeah, look, Ali, thanks again for having me. Every political dynamic often involves some type of extremism versus moderation. There are 18 Republicans right now in uh, the House caucus who represent Biden districts, many more who represent, quote unquote, competitive districts. And what they want and what their constituents want is very simple, get stuff done, work with the other side when and if it, it is reasonable. And the one clearly defining characteristic of, of everything the Republican uh, Congress has done thus far is it doesn't result, it won't result in anything getting signed by the president of the United States. It won't result in anything impacting pocketbook issues. Everyone looked at the rules package as an isolated incident where the moderates largely fell in line with Kevin McCarthy and the extremist wing of the Republican Party had their way. And what we've seen in this past week is again, there's been a dominance of extremism. And it's a scary thought to think that that may be the, the dynamic going forward. Let me ask you, Joe, there, there's political preservation. Uh, there's the idea of holding on to power. There's the idea of making meaningful change that's driven by ideology. What do you make of what's going on with this, this far right group in the, in the House right now? What, what is it they want and how will they succeed? And how do they make sure that these 18 uh, Republicans who won in, in Biden districts and the, the many others who are otherwise moderate don't just sort of say, we'll vote with Democrats on some of these things? Well, they don't really care about that, Ali. What they're giving, it, what they're doing, is they're giving their base voters what they want. I'd add to what Max said. The one defining characteristic of these Republicans these next two years is revenge. These two years are all about the are all about revenge. The base of the Republican Party, Ali, believes the 2020 election was stolen. House Repu Republicans reflect that belief. So they're going to investigate Fauci and COVID. They're going to investigate big tech, who they thought helped steal the election. And they're going to go after the deep state, who they believed helped steal the 2020 election. I, I, you, you, I'm so glad you emphasized this in your opening. This is revenge. This is about settling scores. And for most of these Republicans, Ali, it will work. They don't care necessarily about these other moderate Republicans. Some of them we've talked don't even care if Republicans retain control of Congress in two years. This is about feeding the base. Max, uh, let me ask you about what Democrats, what you would recommend that your Democratic colleagues do about this right now, because Either they've got to get six Republicans to come over and support them on various legislation, including the uh, increasing uh, of the, the debt limit, which they might actually get. That might be the one that, some, that, that a bunch of moderates come over and say, we won't be party to the economic destruction that is going to befall us if we don't. But what, how, how do Democrats uh, act in this thing? Do they just sort of stick to their guns and lose a lot of votes? Well, look, it's going to be very scary if this political theater then gets transplanted onto a debt negotiation, uh, because then what you're dealing with is the actual credit worthiness of the United States of America. And it's not just an economic issue, it's a national security issue. So what's critical on the part of the Democratic Party is that it has to be the party of reason, and it always has to express day in and day out that it is willing to work with reasonable Republicans to get 
things done. Now, keep in mind, the Democratic caucus in the House needs to be allies of that group of 60 in the United States Senate that will actually get things done in a filibuster-proof manner. That's how they got the infrastructure bill done. That's how they got the chips bill done. And that's how anything will be done in 2023. And right. lastly, the Democratic caucus needs to be allies of those 18 or so Republicans who are in Biden districts that come November 2024, they don't want to be, or October, they don't want to be campaigning saying they didn't get anything done. And right. getting something done is defined by the president of the United States signing a bill into law. Which is interesting, Joe, because there were a lot of uh, Republicans, both in the House and the Senate, who didn't uh, support the uh, what was started as the Build Back Better bill, became the Inflation Reduction Act. And yet, while all that nonsense was going on in the House of Representatives, the, all the attempts to get Steph, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy elected, Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden and, and Kamala Harris and, 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 and other Republicans were touring the country, standing in front of bridges, saying, see what we got done? So it's strange that at one level there are Republicans and, and Democrats touting a, what, what Max would call achievements. Yes, and I think that will continue. And, and Ellie, this is analogous to when I was there and John Boehner was Speaker, and we fought in the House. And the, the Republicans in the Senate primarily had to work with Democrats to get things done. I think this is why, though, we are still the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the chaos we're going to see these next two years. Because there is a caucus, as Max said, of reasonable Republicans, but this can't be emphasized enough. Going back to the battle for the speaker a couple weeks ago. It's not just these 14. The vast majority of this Republican caucus is mega, and they are election deniers, and they blocked certification of the 2020 election. This is what McCarthy has to deal with. It's the vast majority of his caucus, and, and they're still going to rule the ship here for these next two years. Max, uh, we often have you on the show as a national security expert. You're, a, you're an Army veteran. Um, I, I want to ask you about, there's a strange thing going on right now with Republicans. It's not strange that they want to cut the budget and they want the government to spend less. What is strange is the, the depth to which some Republicans want to cut defense spending, and some of it seems tied to this idea of we're, 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 we're spending too much time and money defending Ukraine. Tell me your thoughts on that. I mean, it's shocking, um, you know, to to think that somehow you can be the party of national security and nonetheless seek out reductions in military spending at a time when we're dealing with largely unprecedented challenges geopolitically, particularly from China, as well as from Russia. So you can imagine this is a multi-pronged, multi-front uh, global generations long conflict that we're potentially uh, in the midst of right now. Again, though, let's fit it into a larger political paradigm here. Uh, and Joe's a uh, you know a hundred percent right. This is about the narrative of grievance. Don't send things to Ukraine. Don't send resources to Ukraine when we have a border issue. Don't spend more money on the military when we have problems of inflation. And I think that that mantra is not just short sighted. It's incredibly dangerous and could ultimately result in a far more expensive arms race and, God forbid, an actual hot war. Guys, good to talk to you this morning. Thank you for being with us. The former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois and the former Democratic Representative Max Rose of New York. We appreciate your time.